You can't win if you don't play. This is the backbone of the gambling industry. It is that upon which all else is built, from the casinos that line the Las Vegas Strip to your local corner store lottery. All you have to do is play. Luck is on your side. Behind every gamble, we focus only on the positive outcome, no matter how small the chances. We see others winning great sums of money and think, yes, if they can do it, so can we. All the while turning a blind eye to the countless stories of those who lose money or struggle just to break even. But in recent years, the industry has undergone a noticeable shift. Online gambling is now the largest industry sector, comprising about 40% of the overall market. COVID-19 played a huge role in the shift, with casinos, lottery outlets, bars, hotels, bingo halls, horse races, and sporting events closed or suspended. It would seem the future of gambling isn't in some futuristic casino with holographic slots. The future of gambling is right here on the internet. When it comes to online casinos, there's really two types that you'll come across. Either virtual games, such as virtual blackjack, craps, roulette, and slots, which run on RNG or PRNG systems that use long strings of numbers to give the impression of true randomness in each hand that's dealt. Or live dealer games, which are essentially the opposite of the usual software-based online gambling. In live dealer games, the game depends on the real-time results of a real dealer's actions being streamed live to each player. This system isn't built lazily or cheaply either. It's backed by a pretty impressive combination of teamwork and technology, as players can even chat with the dealer and they can respond verbally, no different from the chat in a Twitch stream. The running costs of such a live service can widely exceed those of the more common virtual online casinos, as they require capable, presentable, and well-trained staff to keep the service running around the clock. But the end result is shockingly similar to the real thing, only much, much more dangerous. Not only are services like this available 24-7 for you to throw your money at the screen, but they make a gambling addiction much easier to hide. It's instantaneous, discreet, and available in your own home, where drugs or alcohol could be within reach, further impairing your ability to make good decisions. Friends and family may not even become aware of the addiction until it's fully developed. And while brick-and-mortar casinos frequently ban problematic customers from their establishments, online casinos will often do everything in their power to keep you from giving up gambling for good. After all, to them, you're a consistently paying customer, and your intention to quit likely comes from your large payouts to the online casino you're addicted to. With a special one-time offer or an increase in targeted ads, they can have you back on their site before you know it, risking what little you have left for a shot at something big. Ask any avid gambler, and they'll tell you, the slots, the roulette, that's all just luck. But poker? Poker is about skill, about mind games, about reading your opponent and having the perfect poker face. But online poker is very different. The lack of a physical location means you also don't have poker faces to scrutinize, no body language to observe. Instead, online poker players hone in on their opponent's betting patterns, reaction times, and speed of play, as well as any known information on the players themselves, such as the rates at which they fold or flop. In addition, the pacing of online poker puts conventional poker to shame. Whilst the average rate of play in brick-and-mortar card rooms is about 30 hands per hour, online casinos don't have to wait for the dealer to collect and shuffle the cards. Nobody has to count out their chips, and users all around the table often have auto-action buttons, where a player can select their action before it's even their turn. Because of all of this, online poker tables can average up to 90 to 100 hands per hour. And that's just at one table! In a traditional casino, you can really only play at one table at a time. And if you want to increase your profits, you increase your limit, which just means you're playing at a table where betting occurs in higher increments. And as a result, you're likely to go up against better opponents. 
In online poker, it's completely allowed, if not encouraged, to play at multiple tables at a time. Some online players can apparently maintain 8 to 10 tables at once, whilst still consistently making good decisions on each one. The United States National Council on Problem Gambling reviewed more than 140 studies and reports related to sports betting and gambling addiction. Amongst their findings were that sports bettors have higher rates of gambling problems than any other gamblers, at least twice as high. They also found that sports bettors who use mobile devices are at much higher risk of problem gambling. The issue also seems to affect younger people more than older people, an unprecedented trend in the gambling industry. Though most people are rather informed about the harmful nature of casinos or online gambling, many sports fans simply aren't aware of the damaging effects that online sports betting can have. To many, it's simply a way to increase your own personal engagement with any single sports event. But it's important to be aware of the risks one is exposing oneself to when doing so. Gambling of any kind can have serious, real-life consequences. And it's vital to realize that you're really just playing into the secondary purpose of sports betting. Players who've bet money on the outcome of a match are much more likely to watch the game. Our phones have opened the gates to new forms of gambling beyond the occasional sports bet, though. You may have seen ads from your local lottery that you can now buy lottery tickets straight from your cell phone. Or you may have seen advertisements on YouTube or Google for apps that offer no functionality beyond being a virtual slot machine you can carry around in your pocket. Some of these apps have age restrictions as low as 12 and mask their virtual slot machines in cute little animals or kooky characters while they drain their impressionable player base of their money. When these apps gain access to your notifications, they can lure you in with promises of free spins and daily rewards. Their reviews on the App Store are typically littered with horrific stories of people who have thrown away ridiculous amounts of money because they truly thought they were gonna win big. Even when the negative reviews slow the number of new players, these companies just repackage the software into a new skin, release it as a new game on the App Store, and proceed with a clean slate to manipulate a new set of users. According to various reports, the mobile gambling market is expected to reach around $150 billion by the end of 2030. One type of online gambling that's been a topic of controversy for many years is what's come to be known as loot boxes. They stem from the increasing amounts of money gamers seem to be willing to spend on digital goods, usually cosmetics, in video games. By tying these in-game cosmetics to a drop chance in the randomly generated loot boxes, digital goods can be given a sense of rarity and value. Though many companies throughout the years have been forced or so inclined to reveal the drop percentages behind each of their items, knowing this doesn't seem to prevent players from trying. We stare at that 1%, or that 0.1%, or that 0.0001%, and think, well, someone's got to get it, right? Why not me? Entire websites, platforms, and communities have spawned around gambling with virtual goods, some with scandals and controversies of their own, such as the infamous case of CSGO Lotto in 2017. Thanks to platforms like Steam, which allow players to sell their digital goods for real money directly through their client, skins and cosmetics can actually have a numeric market value on them and be traded or staked accordingly. It's gambling. You can try and convince me otherwise, but I don't see it. All I see is the repackaging of a manipulative industry for the younger generations. And it works. Oh, it works. The in-game gambling and loot box market is expected to exceed 20 billion US dollars in the next three years. Whilst it can be tempting to get swallowed up in the narrative that COVID-19 pushed hundreds of thousands of new people towards gambling, the truth is the biggest effect the shift to online gambling has is not on people who didn't tend to gamble before the pandemic. 
Studies have shown that it's in fact regular gamblers who are impacted most dramatically by this, with one study suggesting that regular gamblers were more than six times more likely to gamble online compared to before the pandemic. What this means is that a considerable number of the people playing these online slots or virtual casino games have a long history of problem gambling. The internet allows them to fully embrace their habits and work them into every free moment of their day, as conveniently as one might reach for a cigarette, people all across the world are turning to online gambling. Various marketing analysts expect the online gambling market to continue to grow significantly in the next few years, as more and more online casinos invest in new technology and staff to keep these services running smoothly, experts seem to agree this trend isn't going anywhere. The industry of gambling and betting is adapting to our modern lives as fast as any other. These systems are designed so escaping them feels impossible. I've even fallen for a few of these myself. Though I've never been one for poker or slots, I've spent my fair share of money on digital goods or loot boxes in video games that years later serve absolutely no purpose to me whatsoever. If there's one thing I try to keep in mind, it's to adopt a healthy mindset towards any kind of gambling. Because when you gamble, you're playing to win. But the table you're playing at, they don't care if you win. The website you're on, the app you're using, the free-to-play game you're playing, these services only exist because they turn a profit. Because somehow, some way, despite their massive advertising budgets and the occasional payout, these companies make money. And that money has to come from somewhere. When you gamble, you are the source of their profit. No matter how many times you win, you will lose in the long run. Not because you aren't good enough, or smart enough, or lucky enough, but because the odds were stacked against you from the beginning. Journalists, politicians, doctors, hundreds of thousands of people have tried in many different ways to explain to the public why this entire industry is just preying off your most primitive impulses. But gambling is as old as time. Trying to keep a society from gambling is like trying to keep a baby from crying. It's simply in our nature to take high risks, whether for the thrill or for the prospect of reward. But remember, when you take a gamble, that the loss you may be about to suffer is one you could have avoided entirely.